life. This can be given a second chance. Be my guest. How do you make money for nothing? Oh, that looks very sporty. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. You never told me it was this heavy. <laughs> yeah. That's why designer Jackie Joseph wants to get her hands on things before they hit the skip. That looks interesting. I'm a fashion designer turned upcycler with a keen eye for style. I take old, unwanted and abandoned things and transform them into on-trend treasures. And then I sell them for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... I come bearing a gift. Really interesting. Whatever we do needs to pack a punch. She can transform her finds into desirable... I have never seen that done before. You're good. Valuable... I, I'm literally speechless. ..and hopefully saleable items. I had to put my glasses on, they're so bright. If Jackie is successful, yeah. then she can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. Joking! You are joking! At the Altrincham Recycling Centre, people's unwanted whatnots are crashing into the skips. But here, sniffing out things she can save, is upcycler Jackie Joseph. And she's not the only one sniffing about. I think there might be some sausages left on that barbecue. Here they are. Cars have rolled in, car boots are flying open. Let's have a look. Jackie has special permission to browse through the boots. Oh, what have you got here? In search of three things she thinks have the potential to produce profit. Waste not, want not. True. What about this? A massage chair. I'll probably need a massage later, that's for sure. Sarah's arrived, but will Jackie want to rub shoulders with her rubbish? Wow, there's a lot of legs here. Yes. <laughs> Are you still rummaging for bits? Yeah, I've just got one chair seat to go in there. <laughs> My name's Jackie. What's yours? Sarah. Sarah. Lovely to meet you, Sarah. These look pretty... pretty old. I think they're at least 50, 60 years old. Yeah. Do they belong to you? They do, yeah. They originally were my grandparents. Oh. They've been passed down to me. Do you remember these being used by your grandparents? Um, I remember them being in their home, yeah. Yeah, long, yeah. How long have you had them for? Um, at least 20-plus years. But I, I did uh, use upholster them with an old tablecloth. Uh... <gasps> That's genius, Sarah. An old tablecloth. Yes. Very it's good. It's got rather worn, as you can see. Well, I, mean, I, I, I used the old nails. Uh, yes. And did the best I could. It seemed better days. Yeah, but that's not bad. You know, you didn't do a bad job there. So, would you mind if I took your grandparents' chairs? Yeah, you can have them, yes. Take them, please. I'll keep in touch with you. OK. And I'll come back and show you exactly what I've done. OK. Amazing. Sarah, thank you very much. OK, bye. Jackie's first find is a set of well-worn dining chairs. Do you think she'll be able to save them, Sarah? I'm be delighted if Jackie can do something with the chairs, cos they have got that uh, emotional connection to me with my grandparents. Um, so it'd be nice if she can do something and improve them. I love the carvings on the back. I love the shape of the turned legs. Really, really nice. Yeah, they're a little bit rickety. They've definitely had a lot of use. But there's just something about them that says they have got potential. But who is Jackie calling on to revive these seats with a brand new look? It's sisters Katie Stone and Sophie Lawrence. Luxury upcyclers, or lux cyclers. Katie and Sophie specialise in taking dull furniture and lavishing it with their bright and bold designs. We are sisters. Yeah, and best friends. And together we lux cycle furniture. Sorry, sorry, start again. Gave you a dirty look when you said that. Am I not your best friend? Of course you are. We would describe our job as, as a lifestyle. Yes, yeah, it's definitely. a hobby and a passion. We literally live, breathe, sleep, eat wallpaper, yeah. fabric, colour. It's what we love to do. 
But will Katie and Sophie still be feeling the love when they see the rickety chairs Jack is sending their way? With one item under her belt, Jack is back at the boots. What are you throwing today? And you know what they say? The bigger the boot, the bigger the booty. I was getting really excited when I saw a van. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Unless they've already been cleared out, that is. Mark's arrived in his van, but does he have anything that'll interest Jackie? Oh, that looks really heavy. Hello, what's your name? Mark. Mark, I'm Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Lovely to meet you. Are these your gates? Yeah, yeah, we've had them for some time now. Don't need them anymore. Just widen the drive and it's uh, time to get rid. And is it, what, what is it? Is it metal? Is it iron? What is it? Well, they're made from uh, wrought iron. Wrought iron? Yeah. There's a lot of material there. There is, yeah. Isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, there, and, and it looks pretty heavy. Very heavy. I propose that I take them off your hands OK, and if I'm able to do anything with them, I'll keep in touch and I'll yeah. come back and show you exactly what I've been able to do. Fantastic. Is that all right? Yeah, that's the best solution. That's amazing. Now, we need some strong arms to get these out, don't we? Yeah. Right, so I'm going to go and get some help. I'll be okay, back. OK, smash him. Jack has bagged a pair of heavy-duty iron gates. Any idea what she'll do with them, Mark? Oh, oh, maybe a tabletop, I, I don't know. But they look pretty ugly to me. So we'll see what she can make of it. These are really well-made wrought iron gates. So to me, the more material I have, the more chance there is of making something really useful out of these gates. But who is Jackie entrusting to work their magic on all that metal? It's the bashing and banging blacksmith, Beck Simon, and her husband, Dave Harris. This pair have a flair for forging a forgotten mix of metals into one-of-a-kind pieces of furniture with an artistic edge. We are basically artist blacksmiths. Um, I like the term artsmith. Um, and, yeah, we just basically form metal into really cool shapes. So I'm not a blacksmith at all, actually. I'm, um, I'm just her husband and dog's body. A chartered building surveyor. And before. problem solver and do all the other stuff that she doesn't like to do. Yeah, exactly. Well, you might need to put your heads together for this project. These old gates could really test your metal. With two items found... I've got two mattresses in the back of the car, though. Oh, no. I don't need to lie down just yet. Jack is back on the hunt for something she can work on herself. Well, have you got some fabulous fabric? Wonderful dresses? No, unfortunately not. Oh. Just not in that mood. Chris is clearing out, but will she have what Jack is searching for? Hello, um, I'm Jackie. What's your name? Chris. Oh, hey, Chris, nice to Hi. meet you. Is this yours? Yeah. Oh, wow. Did you buy it new? Or... No, no, I bought it in a charity shop. How long have you had it? 20 years. Did you crackle glaze that, or was that how it was? Yeah, I did it when I was at college. You did it, Chris? Yeah. You're a bit of a crafter, then? I am. Why, why are you throwing it away now, though? I'm trying to make space for my wheelchair. So you're just doing that a general clear-out? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's rather nice. I really, I really do. Would you mind if I took it off your hands? Yeah, sure, that, lovely. If I can do something with it, I'll be in touch. Yeah, yeah? Okay. lovely. Thanks very much. Oh, well, good luck. Care. <laughs> Thank you. Jack is off with Chris's former college project. What would you like to see done with it, Chris? I would hope to think she would keep it the way where it is and paint it and just jazz it up and make it more modern. I know it doesn't look like much now, but I love the shape of it. I like the legs, the curve of the legs, and I just think this needs to be given another chance, a new lease of life. I've just got to get my thinking cap on. And with that, Jackie's search is complete. Katie and Sophie's challenge is to cheer up the dining chairs with a contemporary new look. Bex and Dave need to unlock the potential of the wrought iron gates. 
and Jackie will attempt to give new life to the crackle-glazed table. But will she crack under the pressure of updating it? Well, I came, I saw, I collected. And OK, my skip finds might not be looking that great at the moment, but I've got big plans to change that. In North Devon, Bex and Dave have received the Iron Gates, but are the heavy metal couple impressed with Jackie's latest find? I think we're just looking at material here, as in, you know, we've got a lot of stock to actually play with and maybe make something out of. Yeah. What do you think? I don't know totally yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of got an idea, but I'll be interested to see what Jackie has to suggest. Hello? Hey, Bex. You all right? It's Jackie. Oh, hi, Jackie. How are you doing? I'm really, really well. Is Dave with you as well? Yeah. Hi, Jackie. I'm here. Oh, hey, Dave. Hey. <laughs> hey. How are you so, doing? guys, those rusty gates. I had in my mind some sort of seating. What do you think? There's quite a lot of uh, sort of good workable material. Probably not enough to make seating, which would be amazing. But I had an idea of doing um, a fire pit. Now, that's out of the box. <laughs> OK, that's very interesting. I tell you what, I don't know how you're going to create it, but I like it. <laughs> It would look amazing as one huge big fire pit. So what are we talking about budget-wise? Let's call it £600 and we should be good to go. I love it and I wish you the best of luck and I will see you very, very soon. Brilliant. Excellent. Right. Looking forward to it. OK, guys, thanks so, so much. Take care. OK, bye. Yes, bye. 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 So the plan is to use the old gates to create a fire pit. And to get an idea of how it might look, Bex is sketching out her plan. Bowl. Then, obviously, keeping the scrolls, because that's obviously what it's come from, so we can do them, you know, around the bottom here for it to sit on. Yeah. So we could have the bars come up from here, around, we just weld one on top of the other. Yeah, OK, yeah. No, I like that. That'd be really good. Bex and Dave have £600 to try and create a sculptural fire pit with the old gates. This hefty budget is a big risk for Jackie, so the heat is on for Bex and Dave to produce the goods. Folkestone is a port town where plenty of creative types ply their trade. Even the seagulls are in on it. Is that a self-portrait? It's also where Katie and Sophie have set up shop. And they've taken delivery of the carved dining chairs that Jack is hoping they can work their colourful magic on. They need a lot of work. They're very tired. But can't wait to hear what Jackie thinks. Yeah, I'm intrigued. And to tell her our ideas. And hopefully think, she likes yeah. them. Hello. Hi, Katie. Hi, Sophie. How are you both? Hi, Hi Jackie. Jackie. We're good, thank you. So, have my carved dining chairs arrived with you? Yes. There's a big crack yeah. in one of them, so I think we'll get that off to our family carpenter. They need work. I know, they certainly do. But I thought some wonderful, colourful fabric would liven them up. What do you think? Have you had any ideas? We thought, what's the most colourful, bold, vibrant style we could think of? And we instantly thought Mexican, so... Ooh. Yeah. Wow. So, what do you think about the woodwork? I definitely think that this carved bit at the top of the chairs just screams out to be picked out in different colours. Um, and then each chair painted a different colour. Yeah. OK. So, some repairs, a gorgeous new fabric and painting the frames. What kind of budget will you need for all four chairs? The paint and the repairs. What yeah. are you thinking? It's a big job, so I'm thinking about 250 250 pounds? Do you know what? That's a fair price. Best of luck with it, girls, and I can't wait to see them when they're finished. Oh, thank Thanks, you, Jackie. Jackie. Good luck. Take thank care. You. Bye. 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 
I think fun, fiesta, yeah, love carnival, that. Fiesta, colourful yeah. vibes. So um, I'm pretty sure that she's going to be. Yeah, I think she'll be wowed. Yeah. <laughs> Katie and Sophie have a budget of £250 to try and overhaul the dull dining chairs with a bold injection of colour. But will their Mexican carnival design be a success? Or will Jackie rain on their parade? With her makers ready to get to work, in London, Jackie is at her workshop with the crackle glazed table. So, Jackie, what's the plan? Perhaps a vanity table, dressing table. But for that, I'd like to add a mirror onto it. The problem with that is this is quite lightweight. The other thing is there's 20 years of crackle glaze to get rid of. To tackle all that crackle, Jackie's headed outside to her favourite sanding spot. This effect is created by applying two different colours of paint along with a water-based chemical glaze, which causes the top coat of paint to shrink and crack. Jackie's using an electric sander to try and strip off all the layers. I was only meant to key the surface on the front and on the legs. I went a bit far. I got carried away. So I can see a few areas that need a little bit of wood filler. With the table sanded back to the original wood, Jackie is cutting out a thick piece of MDF that she's attaching to the back of the unit in the hope of reinforcing the lightweight frame and improving its stability. Let's give it a little clamp, actually. I'm just going to draw something quickly on this bit of MDF. So I'm thinking to have oval mirrors that have a softness to it, one larger, slightly larger, and then two smaller ones. Yeah, that would look rather good. So I've got these 30 centimetre mirrors and I'm using acrylic because they're more sort of shatterproof and they're lightweight as well. So that will help keep the weight down. Yeah, I'm going to try drilling this. I've never used it before. Wish me luck. Is it still seven years bad luck if you break a plastic mirror? Now, should I clamp it? It wouldn't hurt. Oh, she's going for it. Jackie is using a specialist drill bit and is wearing eye protection as she tries to create a neat hole in each mirror. I'm hoping it will work. Perfect. Phew, well done. One will be on the other side, and then when I get my 40 centimetre, that will be in the centre. Right, before I do any of that, let's get this baby primed. Jackie is using an all-in-one undercoat and primer to prepare the sanded back surfaces before she applies her bold blue top coat to finish. I'm just going to add a little bit of black. I just want to darken it a little bit, get it a little bit richer. Right, let me test a little patch. Is that dark blue dark enough for you now? Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. So I'm going to let it dry. And if I feel that I need to make it a bit darker, I'll just add in more black. So far, Jackie's spent £53 on this project. She's going for a brave three-mirror design. But mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, will her dressing table be the fairest of them all? In North Devon, Bex is busy cutting out the swirly bits from the iron gates that will become the base of the sculptural fire pit. And Dave's arrived with a giant iron bowl in tow. Yeah, see, look at that. Lovely bowl. Just looks really nice. Um, I've got to put a hole in it to let the water drain out. While Dave tackles the bowl, Bex is firing up the furnace so she can re-sculpt the gate pieces. 
takes a while to warm up. Well, Dave, what are you up to? We decided to make a little jig thing up to support the mag drill, to drill the hole into the bowl. Dave is using a lubricant to reduce friction between the drill bit and the bowl to try and achieve a nice clean cut. And over at the furnace, it's still slow progress. You have to hold it for a while to impatient. <laughs> well, back to Dave, I guess. When you said a while, Bex. Yes, it's not ready. Oh, shouldn't have done that. Oh, dear. But at least Dave's making progress. Or perhaps just making a mess. It's not a mess, there's a hole. Can't argue with that. Next, he's cutting out the gate components that will be wrapped around the bowl. I guess it just depends how many it takes to put around it. Did you just try to bend it like well, no, He-Man? <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> Do you mean like he man? <laughs> Dave might not have the power to bend the iron sections by hand, but the furnace, which has finally heated up to 1300 degrees Celsius, will do the job of making the metal much more malleable. I was going to do a lot more controlled method, but we're just going to see if we can take this from the fire like, go and clamp it and bend it around the bowl without making a jig. Sort of wing it. <laughs> Are we tacking it on, yeah? Yeah. They're using temporary welds to hold the gate pieces in place as they bend them into shape. Turn the bowl towards you. Towards you. So, has winging it worked out? Yeah, we've got our shape, pretty much. Happy with the curved freehand design, Bex is making a start on some sculptural vines made from the gate frames that will wrap up and around the lip of the fire pit. She's using a power hammer to create the tapered tendril shape, onto which she's planning to attach metal leaves which were left over from a previous project. So I'm putting these in the fire and because they're sort of laser cut leaves with these slices out of them, I want to put a bit more movement into them. To try and create a more organic look, Bex is carefully shaping the leaves with a hammer. So once I've forged out all of these remaining bars, yeah, and then just start welding on the leaves. Yeah, so lots, lots of tendrils to, to cut and make, so um, let's carry on. Bex and Dave need to deliver a fire pit with bold sculptural flourishes in line with their £600 budget. But will it ignite something in Jackie or just burn a hole in her pocket? In Folkestone, Katie and Sophie are preparing the four dining chairs for their colourful Latin American inspired redesign. Katie absolutely hates sanding. I don't mind it, I just get on with it. Could you call that a Mexican sand-off? <laughs> but it is what it is. But it's necessary. It's good for the arm muscles. So we're doing a Harlequin set, which means each chair will be a different colour and we definitely want to do bright. A real cocktail of lovely colours. And when I think cocktail, Mexican cocktail. I'm thinking like tequila sunrise. <laughs> Katie always thinks of cocktails. But the only colourful cocktail on the menu so far is sugar soap and hot water, which Katie and Sophie are using to clean down the chair frames. Even though this has been sanded back, there's like some deep staining in there. Sugar soap is a great way to prepare surfaces, as once it's rinsed off, it doesn't leave behind any residue. So we're going to just focus on two chairs for now um, because the other two chairs need to go off to the carpenter to be for fixed repair. for repairs. These dining chairs have been re-upholstered at least once before, which means there are a lot of tacks for Katie and Sophie to pull out. 
Oh, that's good. Yeah, you've got the good tool. Have I? Yeah. Well, you didn't pick it up first. That's my favourite tool, that one. But you picked up that one first. <laughs> Come on now, no sisterly squabbles over who gets the tack lifter. You're going to have to learn to share. While Katie sweeps up all the tiny tacks, Sophie is cutting out firm foam for the new seat cushions. Before applying spray adhesive onto the wooden seat base and the foam to make it stick tight. Next, she's cutting out a woolen interlining fabric in line with fire safety standards. I'm just really pulling it so that we've got a nice smooth edge here. So that's looking really smooth. We've ordered the fabric, but it hasn't arrived yet, but can't wait to get it on when it does because it's really colorful and going with that carnival fiesta vibe. Looks amazing. Let's get some paint on them. Your favourite bit. Katie has picked out four colours for each chair for their Mexican Fiesta-themed overhaul. Getting those vibes that we talked about. Definitely. I think the colours together will work beautifully. They're using a self-priming chalk and mineral paint, which can be applied straight onto the wooden frames. I think they need at least another one, maybe Probably two coats. Two. Yeah. This wood is so thirsty. But better for it to be absorbing it than rejecting it. Why? Oh, why? I've not heard of a piece of furniture rejecting paint. <laughs> Katie and Sophie still have a lot of work to do including painting the intricate carved backrests and upholstering the fabric seat cushions. But do they have the Mexican-do attitude they'll need to pull it off? In London, Jackie is giving the new mirrors on her dressing table a final polish. But has she managed to transform the old table into the fairest of them all? Well... It's certainly looking very different now. And I think I've got the colour just right. When she found it, the table had been upcycled once before. But Jackie had a vision to give it another chance. And has transformed it by giving it a new use as a vanity table. She painstakingly removed the old crackle glaze and has supplied her custom-mixed inky blue paint all over to try and create a fresh modern look. Jackie's added three eye-catching oval-shaped mirrors, which are attached with MDF strips, but on first glance look as though they're floating. She set out to produce a practical, elegant dressing table, but has she done enough to secure a sale? It took a lot of doing, actually. It was a bit challenging for something so cute and small. But there's so many things that's going for it. I love the oval mirrors. I think they work really well, just sort of mimicking the curves of the top and the legs. Then I got this gorgeous inky blue, which is just perfect. I'm going to take some photos, and hopefully someone else will love it too. When Jackie met Chris, she wanted to know more about her table. Did you crackle glaze that, or was that how it was? Yeah, I did it when I was at college. You're a bit of a crafter, then? I am. Why, why are you throwing it away now, though? I'm trying to make space for my wheelchair. Chris was decluttering, but Jackie couldn't see the table hit the skin. Would you mind if I took it off your hands? Yeah, sure. Just that lovely. Thanks very much. Oh, well, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Jackie whisked it away, and crafty Chris had some ideas of what she could do with it. Paint it and just jazz it up and make it more modern. Well, Chris, I don't know about jazz, but now it certainly has the blues. And that was music to someone's ears, as after being advertised online, it was sold to a glamping retreat in Stratford-upon-Avon. Co-owner Joe thinks it hits all the right notes. It's a complete one-off. It's something very different, and I also really like the colour of it and knew it would match the colour of the hood of the daybed in the dome. It would just fit perfectly. 
Unfortunately, I haven't been able to catch up with Chris again, but her cute little side table has produced a profit of £212, which will be going straight to children in need. Jackie spent £53 on mirrors and paint. The dressing table was sold for £265, leaving a profit of £212, which will be donated to a children's charity. With one sale under her belt, Jack is in North Devon to find out if Bex and Dave have managed to unlock the potential in the old gates by transforming them into a stylish fire pit. I don't know what Jackie's expecting in a fire pit. Oh, well, I've, I've been up and down and up and down, worrying it's all going to come together, but I think it's, I think it's come together. It's worked out really well. I'm excited, but a little bit nervous. Bex and Dave said they were going to turn my old gates into a fire pit. So I'm hoping for a big transformation. The iron gates were no longer needed and were heading to the skip. But Jackie set them on a new path. And thanks to Bex and Dave... They have risen like a phoenix from the flames as a decorative fire pit. The large iron scrolls curve around the bowl to create a stable base and raise it off the ground. And the framework of the gates has been forged into a gradual vine-like design that wraps up and around the fire pit. Bex also incorporated organic metal leaves in the hopes of adding a softer sculptural touch in contrast with the heavy metal. Jackie is expecting a showstopper, but will she think Bex and Dave have delivered? Bex, Dave? Hi. 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 Wow, this is incredible. <laughs> Do you love it? Yeah, no, now, I mean, you know, there's a lot of worrying going on, but no, now, yeah, really pleased. Every, every make is a love-hate relationship, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> That's amazing. It's really like a sculptural work of art. I recognise some of the swirls from the gate. So these bits here... Yeah. So these, you can still see the, the marks from where we cut the main frame of the gate. So I've forged it so you can still see the story. Yeah. So those, those are the bigger bars and they stop about here. Yeah. And then you've got the smaller section of the bars here. And these we just recycled from an old job because I wanted that feeling of the autumn leaves flowing in the wind. <laughs> But it, words fail me, honestly. I, I just didn't know what to expect. Look, it was quite a sizeable budget, wasn't it? We said £600. How did we do? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's probably about right with the amount of time that we've put into it. It's worth every single penny. And, yeah, you've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you very soon. Take care, All see right, you soon. Cheers. Bye. 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 Jackie's response was really brilliant. It sort of sealed that it's worked out well. <laughs> we, we always go for an emotional response, and uh, <laughs> to get the emotional response is... Uh, Bonus. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> At the recycling centre, Jackie spotted Mark unloading a van full. Oh, that looks really heavy. Are these your gates? Yeah, don't need them anymore. Just widen the drive and it's uh, time to get rid. I propose that I take them off your hands. Is that all right? Yeah, that's the best solution. That's amazing. Right, so I'm going to go and get some help. I'll be okay, back. OK, smash it. Jackie saw potential in the heavy metal. But Mark wasn't so sure. Look pretty ugly to me, so we'll see what she can make of it. Well, Mark, let's hope the gate's sculptural new look is more to your taste. The fire pit certainly caught someone's eye, as, after being advertised online, it was snapped up by a private buyer. Jack is in Timperley to show Mark what happened to his old gates and pass on the profit. Hi! Hi uh... Hey, Mark, 
Mark, lovely to see you. Are you well? Yeah, fantastic. Oh, yeah. very good, very good. Thank you. Well, of course, the last time we met, you were throwing away some gates. Yeah, but a fence has gone and uh, the gates have gone, so we yeah. can get the, the cars in and out easier. Oh, well, right. Your wrought iron gates made their way down to a fantastic duo, um, Bex and Dave. Yeah. And would you like to see what they've oh, done with, with your gates? Definitely. Brace yourself there. That's amazing. Whatever it is, what is it? It's a fire pit. Get away. That it's looks massive. Excellent. Can you recognise yeah. any bits? Yeah, just the, the base and uh, the decorative work looks amazing. Yeah, well, I'm genuinely amazed. Well, someone else thought it was fantastic, actually, because it has sold. So I do have £387. You're you're joking. 387. Fantastic. Do you want me to tell you where it's going? Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, it's going to go to the uh, Northwest Air Ambulance. I'm really into cycling, and we as a club have used them twice. It's a great cause, open for everybody. Yeah, they do incredible yeah, work. Definitely a good thing to give it to. Thank you so much, and it's lovely to catch up with you again. Yeah, that's OK. Thank you. You take care. I will do. Okay. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bex and Dave came in on budget at £600. The fire pit was sold for £987, meaning Mark has £387 of profit that he's going to donate to a local air ambulance charity. Brilliant. With two items repurposed and reborn, Jack is in Folkestone to see if Katie and Sophie have managed to give the old dining chairs the burst of sunshine they promised. For me, they literally sing to yeah. you. Their, like, Latino music is playing in my yeah, head right now. Absolutely. <laughs> they couldn't be more fun. No. Well, those old chairs I left with Sophie and Katie were in desperate need of some TLC. Now, the girls promised me a Mexican-inspired, colourful design. I'm hoping to be dazzled. When Jackie found the dining chairs, they were damaged and worn from years of use. But Katie and Sophie got to work, and now... They're ready to party, thanks to their Mexican carnival-inspired redesign. A bold zigzag stripe fabric now adorns the re-upholstered seat cushions. And Katie and Sophie have carried their bold colour scheme onto the chair frames too, which have been fully repaired and hand-painted. The sisters have added contrasting accent colours to the legs, and they've intricately picked out the carved leaf design on the backrests. And for a final flurry of fiesta, Katie and Sophie have added pom-poms and tassels in the hope of adding even more fun to this colourful set of seats. But will Jackie want to join in the party when she sees them? Hey, girls. Hi, hey, Jackie. Jackie. Wow, these are amazingly bright. Yes. When you said, like, Mexican and bright, I, I didn't think they were going to be like this. This is incredible. I call these the harvest chairs because of all of the decorative... The carving. Um, and I'm so glad that you celebrated that. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> the, these were just screaming out to be brought to life and yeah. we've got the leaves and the flowers and, yeah. We've just picked out all the colours from that fabulous fabric. And actually, right at the very last minute, we decided to distress them. We actually like that finish, yeah. don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've got that really rustic well. but colourful charm. Yeah. Yeah, and I like that even, you know, on the legs, you, you know, you've celebrated the, the spindles there. Yeah. So yeah. you've given them colourful colours. Yeah. And, and I think that gives it lovely interest, as well as, obviously, the back. Yeah, because what is a Mexican... Yeah. Chair without a pom-pom and a tassel. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's talk... Let's talk money. OK. So I left you with a budget of £250. Yeah. yeah. How did we do in total? It was easily done with the budget that we had. Yeah. You've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, and Thank I'll see you, you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I knew she'd love them. 
very, very happy with Jackie's reaction. They've gone from these boring brown chairs to fun, fiesta, fabulousness. <laughs> Katie and Sophie have just worked wonders on them. They're bright, they're fresh, they're colourful, and they're saleable. When Jackie met Sarah, her old dining chairs caught her eye. Wow. So, tell me about these. Are these your chairs? They originally were my grandparents. Oh. They've been passed down to me. But I, I did uh, use upholster them with an old um, tablecloth. It's seen better days. Jackie couldn't see them hit the skip, so whisked them away, and Sarah was hopeful they could be saved. I'd be delighted if Jack can do something with the chairs, because they have got that uh, emotional connection to me with my grandparents. But will Sarah approve of their bright and bold new look? Jackie advertised the chairs for sale online, but did she find a buyer? She's in Timperley to show Sarah how the chairs have turned out, but will she be passing on a profit? Hi, 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 hi Jackie. How are you? Oh, good, thanks. Good, good. Lovely to see you again. Thank you. Good. Well, the last time we met was at the recycling centre, and you were getting rid of four dining chairs. You had used them, but previously they'd belonged to your grandparents. That's right, yeah. Uh, so I've got a new table and... <laughs> it's a little better without them. OK. I sent your chairs to two wonderful young ladies, two sisters, called Katie and Sophie. Mm -hmm. So would you like to see what the girls yeah. have done with the chairs? I definitely would, yeah. They wanted a Mexican look. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. Very colourful, very vibrant. And they really picked out all of the backrest designs. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Definitely Mexican. Feel to it, yeah. Do you approve? Yes, yes, 100%. Yeah. Someone else likes them, mm -hmm. and so all the chairs are sold, and I have for you a profit of £90. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. Um, so, if you don't mind me asking, Sarah, what might you do with that money? Um, I'm not sure. I might uh, take the children out for a nice meal. Why not? A meal for you and the children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. Well, look, thank you so much for letting me take your chairs. Pleasure. Lovely to see you again. And you. Take Bye. care. Bye. Katie and Sophie's Mexican makeover came in on budget at £250. The set of seats were sold for £340, leaving Sarah with a profit of £90 to take her children out for a lovely meal, hopefully Mexican. Jackie saved three things from being crushed. The upcycled table has been beautified and will live on as a vanity station. The wrought iron gates have been radically repurposed as a decorative fire pit. And the tired dining seats now have a very bright future indeed. Ole! Is that Mexican or Spanish? That's three things saved from the skip, all given a brand new lease of life. I'm so pleased by what Bex and Dave and Katie and Sophie have achieved. Plus, there's money made along the way.